Hello everyone, this is General Hand Grenade. Welcome to my war room in Prince George, British Columbia. In this video we're going to be exploring a global war expansion set called the Spanish Civil War. Um, this is for Global War 1936 to 1945. Now, not too long ago, maybe a month ago, maybe not quite, I did a video on the Spanish Civil War, but that was with the out-of-box rules. And as I said at the time in that video, um, that I was uh, hoping to get this expansion set at some point in time. Because one of the things that sets this game apart from a game like, say, Axis and Allies, is uh, things like the Spanish Civil War. And this is actually a pretty big deal in this game. It, uh, there's victory points that are associated with it. And so it can go a long ways, or it can make the difference between winning and losing this game, whether or not you win or lose the Spanish Civil War. And so um, what this uh, expansion set does is that it expands that war. Like normally it's just between Germany and Russia, right? But in this, uh, with this expansion set, and as you will see, other nations can get involved. France and Britain and, and America can get involved uh, on the Allies side and, uh, and they're not even normally <laughs> associated with the war, right? And Italy can get involved. Uh, they can send units or send supplies, uh, all of these nations can. And you can do full interventions or limited interventions. But as with anything that you do in war, there is consequences to that. And so we're gonna, this is a really involved set. And uh, we're gonna, it's gonna take a while to explore it. So this video might take a, a little longer than most of these expansion set videos. But I think that you'll see that it's worth it. Um, if there was one expansion set you were going to buy and no others, then this is probably the one to get because of how, how much it adds to the game. And not only that, but let me just show you this. Take a look at this. Look at how much stuff you get with it. Like here, uh, everything that I, I've, I've set everything down, like you get these uh, markers here and you get these markers down here and you get these boats. But all of these things that you see here in, in Spain and, and Portugal, um, like here's the Republicans here, and uh, they're, um, they're Russian units that are plum in color. Uh, the color is called plum. And then here are the, um, the nationalist units over here. So you get a ton of units in there. And if you don't get this set and you're just going to play the out-of-box rules, you still need to somehow staff this area, right? You still need to... Uh, buy a lot of units for the Republicans and a lot of units for the Nationalists. So um, <clears throat> you're looking at the cost of the this expansion set. And you think, well, geez, that's you know, that's uh, that's going to add to the cost of my game. Well, so is having to to get the units um, if you if you're not going to get the Spanish Civil War. So this will go a long ways to uh, filling out the the pieces that you need to play this game because if you're going to be like me and you're going to go from axis and allies to global war then you're going to need a lot more stuff right and this helps you get a lot more stuff this uh, takes care of one section like when i was thinking about getting the game i was thinking geez you know how am i going to do all this and everything and and i should have just done this right off the bat i should have got the spanish civil war before i even started playing the game because that would have made things a lot easier for me right anyway uh, we're going to get into it here. So, um, I want to just kind of move things around here. So, I'm, I'm just going to bring this back and um, and I'll be right back. Okay, so one of the things that I didn't mention yet, I just wanted to show you what you get in, um, in the box. Now, here you've got the roundels, like you just punch these out, right? Just like uh, you've probably done for lots of your games before. And uh, punch the roundels out of the Axis and Allies games. So you get the nationalists and you got the republicans you have also got some portuguese ones here um so they give you this with the set when you buy it but i prefer to use the good roundels and so you can buy those too and i don't know if you noticed it yet but uh, i've mentioned it before but you can buy these roundels the, the nice historical board gaming roundels uh the nice thick ones um the, they're beautiful roundels and um you can buy them um you don't have to buy 10 nationalists and 10 republican roundels uh, Doug's made available a set where you can buy five of each in one set and that's all you're going to need uh, If you get uh, five of each then that's all you need because you only need them for Spain 
and Spain is only what one, two, three, four, five, six ter or two, four, yeah, six territories. So uh, and <laughs> the the territories already have some of your roundels on them, depending on what they are. Like here, let's just take a look over here. Like here's a there's a Republican roundel on it. So you know, like it, it gives you uh, enough roundels. Uh, five of them is going to give you enough to do that. Anyway, it's up to you though. Like you don't have to get those. You can use these. These will work just fine, right? So let's just get into this now. Um, I want to give you the background on it. So uh, the second page, it just gives you some nice pictures and says, hey, get this one, right? Okay, let's dispense of that page. And then uh, page three is just to look at the list of stuff that's on there, right? Like just a ton of stuff. So it just tells you everything that's on there. And this is where we're gonna get started, is that the introduction? <clears throat> And I want to read this to you because it's quite interesting. Um, it gives you some of the background on, on why uh, the, the Spanish Civil War is a, a big part of this game, a, a big part of Global War 1936 to 1945. Um, and kind of gives you an insight as to why they weren't in, uh, that, that they were a strict neutral and Axis and Allies, like they weren't part of World War II in that game. Uh, because they were kind of busy. <laughs> and let me just tell you how busy they were. So the Popular Front came to power in the general election of 1936. This coalition of left-wing parties was challenged by a right-wing coalition led by Francisco Franco. Between 1936 and 1939, right-wing nationalists fought the Republican government with the help of their fascist allies in a bloody civil war that claimed a half a million lives. The Republican side consisted of not only government forces, but it included many disparate factions such as anarchists and social trade unions. Many militias were not under direct government control, belonging to whatever labor union or local forces raised them. Many militias lacked discipline as well as artillery and support weapons. The Republicans were aided by international, the international communist movement, which took great interest in the Spanish Civil War. Over 30,000 foreign fighters traveled to Spain to fight for their cause. The fighters and their motivations were varied and included communists, anarchists, unemployed workers, and adventurers. Though France remained neutral, the French Communist Party supported recruitment and provided aid to the Republicans. Stalin saw the war as an opportunity not only to advance communism, but to let the European powers exhaust themselves. Stalin provided some advisors and weapons, but also exacted a high payment in gold from the Republicans for his help. Spain built a number of I-16 fighter aircraft under their license from the Soviet Union. Other aircraft were purchased abroad, uh, some transferred to the Republican side through arms merchants in Belgium and communist supporters in Mexico. The nationalist side consisted of a number of Spanish factions united by their hatred of communism. Uh, monarchists, nationalists, clergy, and fascists joined ranks to create an opposition party. The fascist governments in Germany and Italy were quick to support the nationalists, lending weapons and money to sway the outcome of the war. Br Britain opted for neutrality. While many nations signed the non-intervention -inter agreement in 1936, including the Soviets, Germans, and Italians, most chose to violate it, violate it whenever it suited them. Britain was the only nation that more or less honored it. European leaders from Churchill to Hitler feared the conflict would spill into the rest of Europe, igniting a war before ever anyone was ready. So anyway, that's the backstory behind the Spanish Civil War. And as you can see, uh, everybody had uh, an interest in it. And that's, uh, that's why um, historical board gaming has decided to make this a part of this war like the, it, it just it, it makes it um, a, a bit more interesting right um, so to give you an overview here um, it's the it's designed to clarify the parameters of the Spanish Civil War which frankly can get a little bit messy with all the nations involved and the expanded intervention options presented here uh, what we are simulating here is a war inside of a neutral country. Uh, the following rules should help clarify what this means. And it goes on that, uh, what is there? Uh, I'm going to break it down into separate videos because um, I'll be winded by the time I finish this if I try to do it all in one breath. I think there's, 
Yeah, there's 15 pages that, that go along with it. So there's quite a few, um, quite a few uh, rules that, that go along with it. But they're not complicated though. Like they're, I, I've read through them a few times uh, so I can get a sense of it. And they're not all that complicated. So anyway, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to pause the video here and I'm going to give you the opening setup here. And then we'll talk about uh, the rules and, and we'll, we'll go through them uh, a little slower, right? Instead of just throwing them all at you at once. So I'll just pause it here. Okay, so this is the out-of-box uh, setup here. Now you want to start with the out-of-box setup um, and then they tell you what changes to make if you're playing with the Spanish Civil War expansion set. There's a couple of things I want you to notice first. First of all, um, the boats down here. These are the Republican boats. Now they don't make Russian boats. Uh, historical board gaming doesn't make Russian boats. So you can't get Russian boats in plum color. You could use uh, you could use your Axis and Allies boats like the brown ones instead. Uh, like I, I, I painted mine uh, this color. I was going to make the Republicans this color. Now that kind of grates my nuts a little bit so I might end up painting the plum pieces. I might end up painting them this color here. Uh, I don't know. I'll see. I'll, I'll play with that for a little while. It's, it's kind of a shame though because I really do like the plum color and, and it is different from any of the other colors on the board so it would have been cool to leave that. And also because Calvary is, is a, a newer piece that have, has come out uh, much, uh, much later than the Spanish Civil War set came out. Uh, you'll see that they didn't include Calvary pieces. So I've, I've painted a yellow Calvary piece here. Uh, and these are in the, in the opening setup here. And then you got the Republican Calvary piece. What all they had back then was just chips that said Calvary on them. And then you would just put an infantry on them and, and that would represent uh, Calvary in it. Uh, so there's uh, there's that like you uh, I don't think that you can get yellow uh, Cavalry in fact, I, I've checked and no you can't so anyway, you can't get uh, plum colored boats and you can, or uh, Cavalry or you can't get uh, yellow colored Cavalry You'd have to paint it yourself and I could have I could have matched the paint better than that like I uh, I could have got a better looking yellow than that that would have matched it better but I didn't. Anyway, so the set of changes that you're going to make is uh, for the Nationalists. It says here under Nationalists, as it says, replace the Republican cruiser with the Espana class battleship. Now that's wrong. What they meant to say was replace the Repub or the, the Nationalist cruiser. So this is what they're talking about here is this cruiser right here. So you're going to take this cruiser out, out, out of the game and you're going to put this battleship in there. So uh, here, let me just take a look. Now that battleship there, it attacks at uh, at six, it defends at six, it moves two, and um, and the cost is not applicable. So like you're going to start the game with that, you're not going to be able to buy that during the game. Um, and uh, it's got a shore bombardment of two. So uh, there you go, like if you want to attack the Republicans, uh, you've got some units down here, right? You can put them on your transport there and you can go up and you can you can attack the Republicans. All right then, so so that's that's the first change you're going to make. The next change you're going to make is uh, Republicans, you're going to add one of the armored cars into Madrid here. So there's a Republican armored car and that goes in Madrid. Um, and then for the Soviet Union, it says add one transport in the Baltic Sea, like that Sea Zone 16, or Crimea, that Sea Zone 36. Move two land units from any location to Leningrad or Crimea. So you're going to take a Russian transport, and here I'll, I'll just uh, I'll just show you from here. So here, like you can either put it here or put it here, and then move two units down. Now. Uh, because it's a long ways to reach up there. I've already moved two infantry down. Um, oh jeez, I moved a German infantry down, whatever. So uh, let's just say I moved those two infantry down from up there, okay? Uh, and, and I'm going to put the transport in there. Um, and, and that's probably so you can, you can sail that uh, to Spain, right? To, to give them a hand over there. And then Germany, the only other setup change is you're going to put an armored car 
into Berlin. So you take a German armored car and you put it in Berlin there. And I guess you could lend lease that if you wanted. Um, they just give you a, 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 that's it. That's all the changes you make in the opening set or in this, yeah, in the opening setup for this uh, expansion set. They just give you a few more units in case you want to use them down there. Okay, so, uh, let me just get my papers going here again. I kind of screwed myself up there. All right, now I've got it. Okay, so, so this is a self-contained battleground, this, uh, this area here. Uh, when you're in Spain, it, it doesn't, it has nothing to do with the rest of the world. And when you start this, the war isn't going to be going on in the rest of the world. The war is only going to be going on in Spain. So all foreign units that enter Spain are, con are considered Spanish units. Like if you uh, bring German or Italian units in, they're going to be nationalist units, right? And if you bring any of the other people's units in, uh, they're going to be Republican units, except uh, the Americans could join either side. They, they don't give a shit, right? <laughs> um, but um, they remain uh, Republican or nationalist units until A, they leave Spain, or B, the Spanish Civil War ends. Units still act on the, the turn of their major power, uh, so Italian units would act on the Italian turn, not the Spanish nationalist turn. Uh, so the German, Soviet, and British units could fight each other inside of Spain without being at war or being able to attack each other outside of Spain, including at sea. Um, and no unit can leave Spanish land zones to attack units outside of Spain. So, for example, uh, even if Britain and Germany are at war, Germany could not invade Gibraltar from Spain or amphibiously invade Morocco using a unit that came from Spain. Now, I've taken the units off. There, normally, there's a bunch of units in here for the British. So you couldn't, uh, you couldn't lend lease or bring German units down into here and then from there attack Gibraltar or pick them up any from here uh, in, in the, that are in the Spanish Civil War and then transport them somewhere else. Like they, they stay there until, uh, until the war's over, uh, like one side is one or, um, sorry, uh, just a second, I lost my place here. Well, until the war is over. Uh, oh, they, they can leave Spain, but they can't amphibiously assault from Spain. That's what I meant to say. So if they start here, that you can't pick them up and go and attack somebody. You could you could leave Spain, but you can't leave Spain to attack somebody. Uh, you'd have to leave, and then the following turn you could use them to attack. Um, so no unit, or sorry, uh, no nation may declare war on Spain until the Spanish Civil War is over. So you can't just decide with the French, you know what, I'm going to attack Spain. You can't do that. Um, the, the, they've got their war going on, and you can't declare war on them until it's over. Now, for the end of the war, it is over when A, one side achieves victory, or B, the USSR and Germany are at war and align the respective sides. It, it says pay attention in the rules to where it references the end of the Spanish Civil War or victory, as they may mean, they, these may mean different things. So one side may claim victory when all opposing forces have been eliminated from the Spanish Peninsula land zones. Uh, so that's what they're talking about here. There's six territories here. Um, and they're saying all you need to do to win the Spanish Civil War is to win these six territories. Now that does not include the, the Spanish colonies. There's Spanish Morocco down here and there's the Balearic Islands over here. You don't need to conquer these two spaces in order to win the Spanish Civil War. You only need to conquer these uh, six land zones that are on the Iberian Peninsula, uh, the Spanish land zones, uh, not not pro Portugal or Gibraltar. So that's how you would end that war. Um, so uh, a couple of the things that you can do um, that are not in the in um, the base set of rules, like the out of box rules. Um, this is options that you can use if you're playing with this uh, expansion set. So for facilities, a nation may lend lease facilities as its only lend lease of the turn by paying the building costs. So a 4-3-3 naval base would take three turns and use up that player's lend lease limit for those turns. 
So if you were going to lease a, a base, then you would need to, uh, um, like that would be your turn helping out the Spanish uh, for three turns in a row. So I, I can't see that being uh, something that you, you would want to do. Like they already start with a number of bases in here. Uh, it's not like you need an air base, right? Because, you know, you can reach anywhere in there with the, with the, with the fighter, right? Um, probably the only type of base that you would want is, uh, is a factory in there, I would think. Um, uh, but even then, uh, even then, um, that's a lot of money to pay just to, just to get a factory in there when you could just lend lease the units down there, right? Uh, the Republicans start with a factory, so you, you're probably not going to need one of those. And the nationalists, um, you know, like you could build one, I suppose, but whatever. <clears throat> Only one nation per cal calendar turn may pay the cost to place the, and advance the facility on the produc production chart. So, um, like the, what they're saying is you couldn't uh, place one on the chart with the German and then advance it on, on the same turn with the Italians, <laughs> okay? Uh, to just to get it done quicker you couldn't do that now the supply markers that we got here and here we go there's the supplies right there right um, a marker represents military supplies such as small arms heavy weapons and ammunition food medicine and other items necessary for warfare a nation may purchase a supply marker for one IPP the marker does not count against factory production or lend lease limits once the marker arrives during place units phase, it is lend leased through the normal process to the nationalist or the Republican Spanish side. If there is no lend lease path, it remains in the place unit box. So uh, you do need to have, unlike the partisan rules, you do need to have a lend lease path in order to bring supplies to Spain. Um, once it arrives, the receiving player may use it in any of the following ways. So A, you could use it for recruitment. The player may expend this marker to make an additional recruitment die roll. Or B, the player may expend this marker during the place units and collect income phase in order to convert a militia to a regular infantry. So that's uh, something else that you could do. Um, so, moving on. Now, you can expand your role in the war. Each nation has different set of rules for that. Um, and uh, I'll get to that as soon as I drink some coffee here. Hang on. It's still morning here, so, you know, I like my coffee in the morning. Okay, so for the Germans now, um, where's the Condor Legion? Okay, so here's a Condor Legion marker, or the Condor Legion marker. There's only one of them. This marker here. Um, so um, the Condor Legion, so Germany may send one of its own regular infantry class units to support the Spanish nationalists. Uh, if it was me, I'd send a mountain infantry because there's a lot of mountains in Spain. Um, it may move to Spain in non-combat movement via any available method. So you could use a naval transport, air transport, whatever, right? This is in addition to any Lend-Lease Germany provides. Mark this unit with the Condor Legion marker. This unit is removed from the game at the end of the Spanish Civil War. If destroyed, it may not be replaced. So you only get to do that once. Like if this guy, if you put a, a say a mountain infantry on there and you bring it down and, and he's fighting and he gets killed, well that's it, the, the marker comes off the board and you don't get to do it again. You only get to do that once. Um, and as far as German aircraft, Germany may send one of its own aircraft to support the Spanish nationalists. This is in addition to any Lend-Lease Germany provides. At the end of the Spanish Civil War, it must fly to friendly territory in its first available non-combat movement. Germany may change which aircraft is used, but only one may be in the Spanish territories in, in any given time. So you can fly a fighter down here and decide, okay, I want a bomber down there. You have to fly the fighter out first, then you can fly the bomber in there, okay? Now that's uh, that's a limited option, uh, a limited inter intervention by the Germans. If you wanted to do the full intervention option, um, Germany may declare full intervention in the Spanish Civil War on the side of the nationalists at the start of its turn. 
If Germany does this, it may use all of its military forces in the Spanish Civil War, including its transports to move nationalist forces, using its ships to attack Republican ships and blockade Republican ports. Once a nationalist victory, uh, oh sorry, upon a nationalist victory, German units are immediately repatriated to the nearest German-owned land zone in a supply path. Um, so you could send everybody you got in there if you wanted to, right? But the consequence of that, once Germany declares full involvement, um, Soviet peacetime income increases by plus two IPP, um, and also you increase the British income by plus two IPP. So there's a, there's a consequence to sending all your units in, and that is that uh, your the, the other two sides that are in the the wider war the. Um, uh, World War II, their, their income is going to go up. And you got to be careful of that because uh, the, the faster their income goes up, the, the quicker they're going to be able to enter the war. Uh, you'll remember that from the rules of the game. Now, if you wanted to expand the Italian intervention, um, Italy may send up to one of its own infantry, in addition to any land lease, to fight in the Spanish Civil War. If destroyed, more units cannot be sent. After a nationalist victory, these units are immediately repatriated to the nearest Italian-owned land zone in a supply path. So you can only send an infantry there to fight. Um, full Italian in intervention. So you can send everybody, right? So in a full intervention, um, yeah, you declare that at the start of uh, Italy's turn. Uh, if it does this, it may use all of its military forces in, in the Spanish Civil War, including using its transports, um, and just like the Germans. So you can use your transports, move your stuff, and you can blockade the Republican ports. And um, So the consequence of that is the Soviet peacetime income increases by, increases by two, and so does the British. So exactly the same as the Germans. Uh, either the Germans or the Italians can declare full intervention and go in, and attack the Republicans, but you're going to increase uh, the income of the Russians and the British by two. So that's, uh, that's the Axis intervention. Now the Allied intervention is a little different. They don't normally take part in the Civil War, like in, in uh, um, the out-of-box version of the Spanish Civil War in this game. The, the Allies aren't part of it, it's the Russians against the a Axis, right? So, so for British full of, uh, intervention, uh, they can declare it at the beginning of their turn. If they do that, then they, they can use all of their military forces, all of their boats, planes, you know, everything, right? Um, to, it says, it says to move nationalist forces, but they've got that wrong. They, they mean Republicans, that, like they've, they've written it wrong here. Um, and it's uh, to, to, to attack Republican ships and, and blockade Republican ports. Or wait a minute, they, I guess they could fight on the side of the nationalists, couldn't they? Yeah, because uh, they're, they're, not, uh, they're, they're not on um, Russia's side. So let me just read this. It says, Great Britain may declare full intervention in the Spanish Civil War on the side of the nationalists at the start of the British turn. Sorry, I thought I was reading that wrong. I was going back to my old days playing Axis and Allies where you're actually on the Russian side. In this game, you're not, right? Uh, so you can only join the, um, the if, you're, if you're joining the, Repu or the nationalists. Sorry. If Britain does this, it may use all of its military forces in the Spanish Civil War, including using its transports to move nationalist forces and using its ships to attack Republican ships and blockade Republican ports. Once British declare full intervention, they can no longer claim the IPP bonus from German or Italian full intervention. Britain and France no longer claim any income bonus from an Axis declaration of war on the USSR. After a nationalist victory, repatriate all British units to the nearest British owned land zone in a supply path. So the consequence of that is that when uh, normally their income increases when the Axis go to war with the, with the Russians. So their income is not going to increase when that happens. Um, the, ally, the Axis to, can declare war on the uh, Russians without you getting that increase anymore. Now the French, 
The French player, representing left-leaning elements in France, may attempt to provide Lend-Lease equipment that turn to the Republican cause if he beats the German player in a die roll. Uh, note that France will often be able to lend lease across its border and can avoid blockades. So what you will do is the the German player and the French player, like the French player will say, I want to move, say this guy here across the border here to join the Republicans, right? So what you will do is you'll roll a dice, uh, roll a 12-sided die, and, the, and the, um, as well the German player will. And it doesn't say, but I would assume that it's the, the higher roll gets to go. You know, like if, uh, if the, the French player rolls higher number than the German player. It doesn't say whether it's higher or low, but you'll decide that with whoever you're playing, right? Are we going higher or low? So if, you, if the French player rolls an 11 and, and the German player rolls a 2, then, then this guy actually does get to move in there. But if the German player wins the roll, then this guy is prevented from moving in there. That's how the French one works. So the, the British can fight on the side of the Nationalists, the French can fight on the side of the Republicans, and the United States can intervene on behalf of, of either side. If the player decides to support the Nationalists, add minus one to all Nationalist recruitment roles. If they support the Republicans, add minus one to all Republican recruitment roles. The USA player may end and resume his support at any time. Note that this does not represent actual U.S. political support, but a policy of turning a blind eye to special interests inside the U.S. that would send assistance to one belligerent or the other. So that's interesting. <laughs> that's sad, that, but that, doesn't that make it really interesting, though, eh? The British can, can, enter the, can intervene but only on the side of the nationalists. The French can intervene, but only on the side of the Republicans. The Americans can intervene, not the government, <laughs> just, you know, groups inside of America, and they can, they can intervene on either side. And again, as, uh, same with the Axis. Uh, if, uh, if they do uh, intervene, then, um, then uh, there's consequences to that, and there are different consequences depending on who you are. So the only one we haven't covered yet is the common turn or the Russians. So what happens when they intervene? So uh, communist international brigades. Now that's this marker right here. We haven't gone with this marker yet. So this is, that is a communist international brigade, brigade marker. Um, so the common turn player makes a recruitment role of one, place a communist international brigade marker in addition to the infantry. These are 2-2 two, two militia, so they attack at 2 and defend at 2. Um, these units immediately disappear at the end of the Civil War. International brigades can be upgraded by a supplies marker. So uh, uh, when you make your recruitment roll, um, uh, what a, you, like you count up the number of territories. Let's say the Republicans own four, four territories in there, so you need to roll a four or less, right? Um, and if they only have three territories, then you need to make a roll of three or less. But if you happen to roll a one while you're doing that, then you get to place one of these markers underneath it, and then one of those guys is tougher than normal. <laughs> That's basically what that means, okay? <clears throat> So an aircraft license. The USSR may build fighter aircraft directly in Madrid factory without needing to go through the Lend-Lease process. So there's a factory here in Madrid, right? Now normally you'd need to, to in order to Lend-Lease them a fighter or whatever, uh, any kind of aircraft, um, you would need to build it in Russia and then you would need to Lend-Lease it down. But what they're saying here is that the Russians can actually, well, on their turn when they're um, placing units, they can place a fighter right in Madrid here, or a tactical bomber or a medium bomber. So that's what that uh, is. And also popular support. The Republicans get one additional recruitment die roll for each alliance where at least one member has chosen the full uh, intervention option against them. For instance, if Germany or if Britain and Germany chose the full intervention op option against the Republicans, they would receive two additional recruitment die rolls per turn. So normally you get one uh, recruitment die roll, 
Now, if the British were in there, you'd get two. And if the Germans were in there as well, full, full intervention, then you would get three recruitment roles for the, uh, for the Republicans. Sorry, I'm just looking for my next page here. I kind of screwed everything up here, so I got everything. There we go. So, Soviet full intervention. Now, those are the limited intervention options. The Soviet Union may declare full intervention in the Spanish Civil War on the side of the, of the nationalists at the start of its turn. Now, that's, that's definitely wrong. They would declare full intervention on the side of the Republicans. So that I knew there was something I, that I read through here and it was written down wrong. I kind of screwed myself up when I was reading the British part there. But this, uh, it says here in, on the side of the nationalists at the start of its term, but it means the, the Republicans. So, and that's uh, even prior to January 1939, they can. Uh, if the Soviet Union does this, it may use all of its military forces in the Spanish Civil War, including um, using its transports to move Republican forces and using its ships to attack nationalist ships and blockade nationalist ports. Decrease the peacetime income increase of any Allied power uh, received from an Axis attack on the USSR to zero. So again, it's like before where um, if uh, you attack Russia, then Britain goes up by two bucks. Well, then if uh, if the Russians declare full intervention in Spain, then they lose that. They, they don't get the plus two. Okay, so that's all the interventions. Now, let's move on to the outcomes of the war. Um, so the Spanish Blue Legion, where's that one? Here we go. That's this marker here. Yet another marker, yay! <laughs> if the nationalists win the Civil War, Spain will assist Germany while neutral if Germany and the USSR are at war. Once these conditions are met, place an infantry in Madrid with the Blue Legion marker underneath it. This unit must rail to the next German uh, non-combat movement phase to a German-owned land zone. Um, so basically what it means is you can put a Spanish unit onto here and move them, move them to the nearest German zone and he can fight in the rest of the war. Normally you would leave uh, the units in Spain, right? Um, submarine base. If the nationalists win the Civil War, German submarines may attempt to use Spanish naval bases. To do this, the German player must beat the British player in a dice roll, uh, like that's the D12, um, each time he wishes to do it. Each time Britain wins, they add plus one to the next British dice roll. So kind of like uh, where uh, the French wanted to cross the border there, if, if, um, if the Germans want to place, like a, let's say this was all Sp nationalist Spanish, um, eventually, right? And Germany wanted to place a, a submarine here, then they could they could do that, but they have to roll first. So, you know, like they got to outroll the British, and if they do, then they can place a sub there. But if the British outroll them, then the next time they try to do it, then the British get plus one to that roll. You know, like if they try to do it again. And if the British beat them twice, then they'd add two to the dice roll the third time they try to do it. You know what I mean? So, uh, but you could use the sub, uh, use that to, to place submarines, and that would be that would be advantageous, right? If you were trying to place the submarines in here, like if the the nationalists had won this down in here, uh, because you wouldn't um, like this would be uh, a good place to be in the Mediterranean, and the Germans can place subs right down there. Um, that's assuming, of course, they don't have this naval yard here, like. If uh, they uh, if they created a Vichy France state, then they don't get this. This would be a Vichy France uh, uh, port. So in order to be able to place uh, boats in here, they could place subs there, but they got to roll the British to do that. So if there was a common turn victory, if the Republicans win, um, it spurs the communist movement in other nations as well. The USSR can immediately make a dice roll for each of the following nations. If it gets a 12, that country becomes aligned to the USSR. So Mexico, uh, Central America, and Yugoslavia. Um, so what they mean by Central America is Latin America. So here's Mexico right here. 
Now, if the Republicans win the Spanish Civil War, they'll roll for Mexico. If they get a 12, they get Mexico. So you would replace these units with Russian units and you would place the Russian round along here. Uh, again, Latin America, you roll for that one. And Yugoslavia over here, that's where I've got the yellow units here. Um, then you would roll for Yugoslavia. And if you get a 12, then you get Yugoslavia. So that would be interesting. Um, I'm guessing though that if if Germany already took out Yugoslavia or somebody took out one of those other nations and they're not neutral anymore, then you don't get them, right? I, I'm guessing they have to be neutral and in order for that to happen. Um, otherwise, how would you be able to align them, right? Now, I'm just going to take a little break here and uh, I'll be right back. Okay, so as you can see, uh, the rules with this expansion center are, are a little more, make the uh, Spanish Civil War a little more interesting when you can get everybody in that is in the game, well, not the Chinese, but all the major powers in the game except Japan, they're on the other side of the world. When they can get involved in the Spanish Civil War, that's going to, you know, create a little more tension. And, you know, players are going to be kind of antsy anyway. At the start of the game, if you're playing with the, in the 36 scenario, then, you know, it, it can take a long time to get this war going, right? Um, you could be playing the first day and, and nobody's being at war. So I could see people wanting to jump in there, you know, roll some dice, right? So that's just going to, that's going to give them an opportunity to do that. And, um, you know, with some consequences, but nothing devastating to them, right? So that's interesting. But here's where it gets even more interesting. They have this random events table. So on the, the German player on his turn will make a dice roll on the Spanish Civil War random events table at the start of each turn prior to making its purchases. Each event can only be rolled once, except for number eight and or 11 and 12, which can be rolled multiple times. Uh, so once you've rolled, say, number four, that's it. You don't get to roll number four again, right? And if you roll a number four again, oh, I gotta pick the dice up and then you roll it again, right? See, what, what do you get? Um, oh no, you don't, you don't roll it again. Sorry. Each event can only be rolled once, uh, treat repeated rolls as non-events. So if you roll a four, then you roll another four later, then okay, nothing happens. <laughs> Sorry, kind of screwed you up there, didn't I? Um, anyway, so what are the events? So you would roll the dice, like I said here, let's just, uh, let's just move it over here. You roll the dice and that's an eight, you know? Uh, but, um, I'm not going to go to eight just yet. I'm just going to show you, you just roll one dice so if you roll a one uh says morocco for help the spanish republican government's controlling major power ussr may request aid from the british if the british accept they agree to lend at least one military unit per turn to the republicans until the war ends if they do and the republicans win the spanish civil war place a british roundel marker in spanish morocco and the canary islands so i guess uh it, in return for the British help, um, instead of helping the nationalists, if they decide to help the Republicans instead after a roll of one, then uh, then the British get Spanish Morocco and the Canary Islands. This is the Canary Islands down here, and this is Spanish Morocco. So that's the <laughs> that's the bonus they get for doing that. Okay, so uh, if you roll a two, then Portugal joins. Nationalist interests take up the cause in Portugal. Until the end of the Spanish Civil War, treat Portugal as if, as if it were another Spanish land zone for all purposes, including for recruitment dice rolls. Portugal's armed, armed forces can be used by the nationalists. At the end of the war, restore Portugal's armed forces to their original strength and repatriate any foreign units there to the nearest friendly uh, zone they could legally move into. So, um, would uh, normally there's just uh there i think there's just this is all you start with in portugal uh and there's one of these too so you're just uh if you roll a two then portugal joins and they're gonna um join on the side of the yellow <laughs> one of the yellow guys there and then you replace those units uh after the war ends so if you roll a three that's a failed embargo U.S. indecision allows American interests to finance the Republicans. Add plus one to the Republican recruitment die roll this turn. American automakers provide trucks 
converting one Republican infantry unit into a motorized infantry unit. All right. Now, if you roll a four, it says Franco supports the Axis. If Germany is at war with Britain when this is rolled, Spanish national forces may attack Gibraltar. Britain may select the full intervention option for the Republican side. So that kind of goes against uh, the rules as they were. They just, uh, it says go for it. <laughs> you can join the Republicans. If you roll a five, it says war spreads to Portugal. Communist sympathizers in Portugal take up the cause. Place a new Republican infantry in Portugal. So you get a free infantry over there. Treat it as if it were attacking and resolve any combat immediately. Place a Republican roundel in Portugal if it wins. Henceforth, treat Portugal as if it were mainland Spanish province. Add plus one to the re uh, Republican re recruitment die roll. Place a Republican roundel in all Portuguese colonies um, at the end of the war, restore Portugal's armed forces to their original strength and repatriate any foreign units there to the nearest friendly zone they could legally move into. Portugal is again neutral, but is considered a common turn country and will align with the USSR if attacked. So there are some colonies around the globe that are Portuguese. Like here, let's just look down here in Africa. There's, there's Angola here. And this one here is worth one, that's Portuguese East Africa. Um, and there's Portugal, obviously. There's the Azores. I'm not going to go hunting around, but uh, um, I think there's other ones, though. The Portuguese uh, were quite the naval power back in, uh, in the days of the tall sailing ships. And so they actually, uh, they actually made it around the globe. Uh, they were major spice traders. Uh, I know like in Brazil, they speak Portuguese and <laughs> that's their official language, right? So yeah, the, so they've got a few, a few colonies around the board. Um, so six, if you roll a six, it's pacifism. The horrors of the Spanish Civil War decreased democracy, democracy's appetite for war. Reduce Britain's income by three and US and France's income by one. So that would be a good roll if you were the Axis or the Comintern, right? Uh, keeping those guys out of, the, out of the wider war for a little bit longer. Uh, seven, war spreads to France. Communist sympathizers in Bordeaux take up the Republican cause. Bordeaux is now part of the Spanish Civil War. Republican units may move in and out of this area as if it were Spain. Nationalists may not move into this area. Place one communist international brigade there. French units in Bordeaux remain but ignore Republican units. The Spanish, or the sorry, the French player has several options at this point. A, he may elect uh, the full intervention option in the Spanish Civil War on the Republican side, so long as he is at not war with a major power, or B, so long as he has not chosen the full intervention, he is always free to use French forces to attack Republican units in Bordeaux, or C, the French player can choose to do nothing. So this is Bordeaux right here. This is just north of Spain, right? Now, uh, what they're saying is that you would place a Republican unit up here, and then that can either bring this the French player into the war, or they can ignore them. <laughs> you know, it's up to them, right? Um, uh, like they could do full intervention. Um, he could attack the Republican unit up here, say, get out of my territory, you know. Anyway, uh, number eight. Now, this is one of the things that you can roll more than one time, and that's a right shift. French fascist, fascist elements gain increased power. So France may no longer attempt a, a lend-lease roll to the Republicans. If you roll this a second time, France may lend-lease to the Nationalists. So the first time you roll, you can't uh, lend lease anymore to the Republicans. The second time you roll an eight, then if they want, the French can lend lease to the Nationalists. Okay, and if you roll a nine, it's a leftist shift. So France no longer needs to beat Germany on the D12 to provide lend lease to the Republicans. If number nine is rolled on a second time, it may also select the interventionist stance like Britain, but for the Republican side. Any common turn unit in Spain 
no longer counts against their victory conditions as not having a common turn neighbor. So that's a pretty big deal. Uh, at the end of the game, one of the victory conditions is that there's no communist um, communist territory that's touching this uh, blue part here. Um, this is the home, the French homeland. Now, quite often the French player is not going to get that because one of these or both of these are held by the uh, by the Russians because they won the the Spanish Civil War. So what they're saying is, uh, if you roll that nine a second time, then uh, any common turn unit in Spain no longer counts against their victory condition. So that that helps. So if you roll a ten. That's proving ground. German units gain experience in warfare um, that will uh, prov prove valuable later. Promote one German land or air unit of any type that is in Spain to an elite unit um, with a plus one attack and plus one defense. So uh, I don't know, you probably just put a put an SS marker under or something uh, just so you know which one is uh, an elite unit, right? Or if you... Uh, if you have a separate, uh, like I, I think I have some that uh, that I use as elite units, I would just replace a regular infantry with the elite infantry, right? Now in 11 and 12, that's another thing like the, like the 8 that you can do more than once. If you roll either an 11 or a 12, it says during this calendar year, or during this uh, entire calendar turn, sorry, any nation that has selected the full intervention option may A, Attack any other nation's ships in, in, in any one sea zone. That nation must also have selected the opposing full intervention option. And or B, engage in land-lease interdiction as per uh, Global War 7.8. If either of these happens, increase each nation's in, uh, peacetime income by three. The nations do not have to declare war on each other. So... <laughs> <laughs> this is where the Spanish Civil War is going to spill out into the rest of the world, right? Like if you roll an 11 or 12, uh, Germany rolls that 11 or 12 at the beginning of the round, then um, if you had selected the full intervention option, like say the British had selected the full intervention option and the Italians did, then down here, the, the British, if they wanted to, they could attack the Italian boats in... Uh, in, in one sea zone. If you couldn't attack them all over the place, but they could attack them in the one sea zone without having to declare war on them. So that makes that pretty interesting. Or vice versa, the Italians could do it too. But both nations have to have uh, be uh, fully intervened in the Spanish Civil War in order for that to happen. Um, so Portugal and Bordeaux are not counted towards victory conditions. They do not increase the number of land zones required for victory. Players still need only to conquer the six mainland Spanish zones to win the Civil War. So remember I was saying about Spain or about Portugal here. So uh, that becomes part of Spain um, for the purposes of counting up how many territories that you would use for your recruitment role. But you don't need to own this one in order to win the war. Like if, say, the Nationalists still had Portugal but the Republicans had everything else here, then the Republicans will have won the, the Spanish Civil War. They don't actually need to get Portugal in order to do that. Or Bordeaux. That was the other place you could have spelled out with, uh, with, um, with that role uh, that the Germans made. So as far as the new units here, the armored car is an armor class unit. It may not blitz. It has the following statistics. Attack 3, Defense 2, Move 2, and cost three. So they don't have this the, uh, the armored car in the normal units. Um, that's why they, they are giving you the stats for it in here. And uh, I was, uh, I haven't used armored cars yet. I guess I will be using them if I, the, the first time I play with this, uh, this set here. What I was planning on doing was using them uh, for more than that because those are exactly the same stats as uh, as a cavalry unit, right? So I don't see why, how you could differentiate one from the other, you know? But what I'm thinking is um, what, the, what these armored cars were used for, they were reconnaissance vehicles. So I'm thinking that you, you could increase your, 
your artillery, you know, or you could increase your tanks or whatever, your armor class units, you could do it for one round, you could do it for all rounds. It just depends, you know, one to one uh, paired or, or whatever. I'm, I'm thinking I'm leaning towards uh, increasing artillery by one uh, attack and defense, but only for the first round of combat. But you know what, like there's discussions online that I've seen about it and everything, uh, what you could do with the armored car. So you could go read those or you could make up your own. But anyway, that's the armored car as it's written as attack three, defense two, move two, and cost three. And I've already been through that battleship. That's attack six, defense six, and move two, and you can't purchase it. Okay, so there's uh, some clarifications and frequently asked questions here. It says, can I use the Madrid factory? It said, neither side can use the factory to produce anything um, except as per uh, 5.2. And what 5.2 was, was the where you could uh, purchase the, the, the Russian aircraft, right? So that's the only thing you could use the Madrid factory for. Um, other than that, like uh, the, the Republicans don't get any money, right? So the Republicans couldn't actually purchase a tank and put it here. Um, the only reason that factory is there is, is uh, because they can build uh, Republican planes. Um, Russian Republican planes can spawn from there rather than having to be let leased down. Now, the reason they give you all these different units and everything, like uh, <laughs> all these different units, is because when you lend lease that, say the Russians lend lease that, then you just replace it with these units and uh, then all your units are the same color in there, right? Uh, says, okay, can Germany attack Soviet ships bringing refort, uh, reinforcement to Spain? No, not unless they declare war on the USSR. So uh, outside, of, uh, outside of the USSR, or sorry, outside of Spain, normally those powers are not at war and they can't attack each other. Um, until they are at war, in which case a lot of different things happen. Uh, can Spanish colonies be used? Yes. Most all starters Republican uh, unit that could enter mainland Spain could enter one of these colonies. Who can you blockade and rape? You can blockade a nation's port if you are at war with them. Germany, for example, can use its ships to blockade a Republican port uh, if it chose the full intervention option. You can interdict the lend lease if you are at the at war with the sending nation. Thus, a Soviet submarine could interdict Italian lend lease only if Italy and USSR were at war. So, again, you have to be at war with uh, with that other power in order to do that interdiction. The Spanish Civil War, if I hadn't made it clear enough yet, is a self-contained war and doesn't spill out except for with those dice rolls where you know the the odd time you can do something like what I was mentioning there with the British and the Italian boats but that's just a one-off thing right um, it says what happens to damaged facilities at the end of the war if Spain becomes neutral again not aligned and there are damaged facilities those facilities are immediately repaired so they just get repaired for free right okay you know what there's a there's a lot of writing here that's left here and what it is is strategy notes for the Axis, for the Soviets, and for the Allies. I'm not going to read those off to you. Like, if you're interested in this, then for sure read them, okay? Um, but it just, uh, you don't need a video to have somebody read that to you. You can just read them yourself. So uh, that's at the end of, uh, at the rules uh, of the Spanish Civil War. They're just uh, giving you some kind of hint as to what, how you might play it. So anyway, that's that's about all that I need to tell you about this. Uh, like I said, I think that this would be perhaps the best expansion set that you could purchase for this game, uh, just for the sheer volume of units that you get and how interesting that it's going to make this game. Like I found um, uh, when I was playing with the regular Spanish Civil War rules that it was kind of like it, it started out cool, but then it kind of got boring after a while, right? But uh, with these rules, you know, when you're doing that, that one roll at the beginning and everything uh, of the round, like you just never know what's going to happen, right? And so it, it adds a little bit more excitement to the game by doing it that way. And it could add a little bit of tension because, 
you know, uh, players can be declaring partial interventions and full interventions, and you know, it just gets it just gets more interesting that way, and creates a little bit more buzz around the table. So I highly recommend the Spanish Civil War expansion set for Global War 1936 to 1945. And I'm done here. Take care, everyone. General Hangrenade out.